Hello comrades, so today I would like to start a new series of speeches, of lectures about history of socialism in Poland, socialist movement, revolutionary movement, class struggle in Poland and stuff like this. Firstly, I would like to say that today in 21st century the Polish left is very, very weak especially socialism in Poland is very, very weak. Uh, but also the social democratic left is weak. Uh, for example, in election in 2015, mm, they don't... Uh, I, uh, in only the right parties went to parliament. The mm, social democrats didn't, uh, were, didn't elected to, to parliament. Uh, and the Polish society have opinion today of so society of the nationalist, extreme right, uh, xenophobic, uh, uh, anti-communist society, and of course it is true. But uh, the history of Polish nation, the history of Poland, it is something different that. Uh, in in before Second World War and in 19th century, the Pol Poles have opinion of the revolutionary uh, nations which participated in many many revolution in this time. Uh, so I would like to present um, present this history. Uh, the most important and also less important things about history of socialism in Poland. And firstly, um, I will make uh, a quick presentation about methodology of my speeches. What what is my sources to 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 this to this series of lectures? And for this, uh, I have to present myself. As you know, I am the. I I have this channel, Rebirth of Communism channel. I am also YouTuber who make a YouTube channel in Polish language, Odrodzenie Komunizmu. Mm, so mm, so as uh, many other authors of the YouTube channels. Uh, uh, I make a stuff uh, typical for the YouTube, but before this, uh, I was a student of history in Poland. Uh, I, I study history in uh, from 2001 2008. In 2008, I finished my, my studies. It was a long and and also I I I, I, I lose one year because of my activity politic uh, and uh, and uh, the base of these lectures it is the things which i found in the time of my studies you have to understand the complicated history of poland that poland in after second world war it was a country which uh, was in the socialist camp and uh, in 1940s and 1950s, we had uh, socialist revolution. In my in my opinion, it was socialist revolution, and also this revolution we could find in the history, history how this history was was learned, was teached, was teached in Poland. So uh, so. Um, in time of my of my studies, um, it was a time of big fight between two kind of forces. We had uh, we had all the time the the textbooks, the books, and the old old professors, which were before a members of um, Polish United Workers Party. They very often was a, were a Marxist, very um, Marxist famous. I can give example of one of my professor Anna Żarnowska, which were uh, in the time of the Socialist Poland. 
she she wrote uh, many books about the history of working class in war in Poland, class struggles, history of the Polish Socialist Party. Uh, many of these professors uh, have to retire from the university after the contra-revolution, but she rested in the university uh, after her, de her death. I think that she, she died in 2007 or 2000. Uh, yes, I think it, it was 2007. So she teached me, but she died before I finished my studies. So the the base for my lectures it will be the um, the books which were written in Poland in 1950s 1950s and uh, you have to understand this complicated situation in Poland after Second World War that we have um, a totally new new kind of school totally new kind of the university which existed in Poland because of two things first thing it it, it is the um, second world war and the and the terror which was made by the nazis um, to the polish uh, elites intellectual elites for we can we have examples of the murders of the Nazis. Um, there are very very famous very famous uh, things that the professor was invited to speech of Hans Frank. Hans Frank in, uh, he was a governor governor of the occupied Poland in Krakow and he invited to speech uh, professors from the universities and she came to sp to listen to him and she, they were arrested and killed by the by the Nazis also they made s similar thing in Palmyre 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 it is it is a cemetery it is a cemetery in the in the forest uh, Puszcza Kampinowska uh, which is located uh, uh, in the Warsaw region. It is, I think, 10 kilometers from Warsaw. And many, many Polish politicians, Polish intellectuals, journalists, uh, and also the historians were arrested and killed there. So they killed the, the thousands of people in this Palmyre. It is not main, maybe massive, massive murders, but they wanted to kill th these people which are cap capable to, to teach, uh, to write and intellectuals. So, so it is first thing very important. Second thing, it is the re revolution which is taking place after the Second World War. And uh, and the um, the most of the Polish elites, the aristocrat, bourgeoisie, uh, and also politicians, which are which were famous, to, which have power in the capitalist Polish state before the war, they emigrated. They emigrated and uh, because they don't they didn't support the new socialist program of polish workers party they 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 were fanatical anti-communist so um, the so the situation in the hist in the polish universities was a situation that uh, there are no this uh, Mm, these professors because uh, many of these professors which uh, which teached before the war they were killed or they emigrated uh, and uh, uh, and uh, the history for the uh, Polish Workers Party for the socialist movement is very very important 
and it was a possibility to to make a new history of Poland. It is very important to uh, to the history of our nation because because uh, it is it it was uh, it was good. There were there are many things which was good before of this because the um, the before Second World War the history of Poland it was majority it was a history of the Polish allies Polish kings Polish nobles Polish knights but nobody interested was interesting interested the uh, peasant movements, peasants, workers, uh, artisans, uh, people from the uh, uh, low, 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 low class. So this, uh, this uh, Polish Marxist who became very, very quickly uh, uh, professors of new poly, poly socialist Poland, they starting to create a new history of Poland and my theory of speeches about the history of socialism it will be based on their work so um, and so the, the first question is uh, if they make a good work if these things which they said was was good was it was true and uh, it is not very sure that uh, <coughs> that um, in my opinion sometimes the things which they said of course it was politic politic in the political level very very good but sometimes it was it is not history like a science it is a little like a legend so they they it, they need to find very very quickly a new hero for new socialist Poland and they find uh, people and starting to to celebrate them okay so firstly when we so it will be not about social history of the socialism in this presentation today because uh, as you know the the socialist movement it is response for the capitalism society the capitalism uh, is started to be a um, the, 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 the beginning of the capitalism in Poland it is it is uh, 19th century it is the time after the January uprising especially in um, this January uprising it is 1863-1864 and this industrialization, industrialization very very quickly industrialization uh, in Poland started in 19 in 1870s so it was a time that the uh, in the cities like Warsaw, uh, Gerardów, Łódź, uh, Dąbrowa Górnicza, Białystok also there uh, it, it was a very very quick uh, uh, industrialization new factories new the migration the peasants to the to the cities uh, working class and also the first first workers organization uh, so i will speak about this when i will speak about this guy ludwig varensky uh, but i don't know if i will speak about him today because this this uh, so history of the of the socialism uh, it is the, it starts in start in in this time in 70s in, in seven, 70s in 19th century today i will speak about uh, this prehistoric of the of the socialism in poland 
and uh, how it was presented in socialist Poland. So firstly, uh, firstly we have the le legend, legend which we can find about uh, the history of Poland, history of Polish nation. You have to understand one very important thing that that these 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 books was written in the very important time of for ge geopolitical reasons it was after second world war after many many crimes which were were committed by germans so it is first thing and also it was in the time of the cold war cold war where the western countries are presented like our enemies so the west germans french united states italy vatican they were pre they were our enemies and also in this and this um, history of Poland, socialism in Poland, but also history of Poland, it was also presented like the, our enemies. And uh, so, uh, so we can find uh, um, there were a people in Poland who wanted to find a history of socialism in Poland. Uh, in the time before before the christianization before the christianization uh, it uh, it is this guy this guy it is the historian i will um, uh, his name is joachim lelevel and he he was uh, he lived in the time of karl marx and as you see he he write make a, um, write a letters to karl marx he discussed with karl marx about uh, about history um, but he was, what was his history what was his project he uh, joachim lelevel was a guy who who was one of the one of the historian of uh, Polish historian in 19th century who started to to uh, try to find the answer for the question why the Poland uh, are, is occupied why the Poland now is uh, disappeared and there were a movement in the intellectuals which said that it is because of aristocracy the, because aristocracy that aristocracy were the cowards who traitors and the nation of poland true nation of poland it is the peasants it is the people from the law of the society and they were very interesting to try to find the true true nature of the polish nation and this true na the true uh, element of the nation is in the peasants uh, so um, they um, it is uh, in one thing in one one in one hand they make a um, uh, researchers they try to speak with the peasants uh, the legends of peasants what the peasants is are talking about uh, it is other guy which name is Mickiewicz he is one of the Mickiewicz is one of the most important uh, Polish poet in this time uh, so they uh, they make a um, uh, studies about the peasants in 19th century in the time when they are living but also they start to interest a history of poland uh, 
and uh, what was Poland before Christianization and in the first years of this. It is very complicated subject. Uh, I don't want to um, now present this, but uh, I want to say that it was used after the Second World War uh, by the um, historians um, uh, which they uh, which they read uh, wrote a new history of Poland and they used these 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 things. Uh, which Lelevel wrote, wrote and tried to combine this with Marxism. So, so we can we can find uh, a people in Poland who present a vision vision that uh, the Poles in the 10th century. They're, they're, they're already lived in socialism, that this society which existed in Poland before Christianization, it was a, it was a kind of the um, egalitarian society without kings, without clergy, that every decision was made by the, in the democratic way that all Poles, uh, they are united in one place, they have, they, they, they um, discuss, they voted, and it was, in, the name of this union is Wiec, Wiec, so this, everything was decided uh, in Wiec, uh, of course it is, this is complicated to say that it is history because it is more than legend than history. The history it is verifying the sources and especially sources which is written. We don't have a sources for the history of Poland in the 9th of 10th century uh, because of two things. First things the Poland uh, Poles don't didn't use uh, language, uh, written language, <laughs> so, <laughs> so they can't, they can't present themselves. And second thing, uh, it is true that the Christian church, after Christianization, uh, destroy most of the history of this Poland before Christianization. So, so of course, uh, of course that that uh, hmm. I want to say that uh, that uh, this uh, this uh, mm, it is it is interesting that uh, that uh, this history. I can say alternative history of Poland. I don't know if it is alternative history or not, because um, for me, like a historian, the history is started with the ecriture, with the writings. Uh, maybe in one way we will find this history of Poland before Christianization. But uh, um, in my opinion, some some things which were presented in um, in uh, in this uh, socialist by this uh, by, by this Marxist historian about the history of the um, Poles, but it is not only Poles; it is the Slavic nations, uh, because you 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 need to understand this geopolitical context that in the mm, in the mm, in the time of christianization uh, it is the 10th and 11th century we have the sim situation similar to the to the situation in after second world war that after second world war the 
Mm, the Europe was divided. Capi Western Europe was capitalist and Eastern Europe was socialist. And in the time of Christianization, also the Europe was divided. That, that uh, Western Europe was Christian and feudal and Eastern Europe was mm, not Christian and not feudal. And also it was a Slavic nations. We have the Czech with uh, the... Okay, okay. Mm, so, the, there are... Uh, mm, there are this, there are problems with this theory. First problem is uh, it's uh, sources which say that uh, the Poles and other Slavic nation in this time they they sell as slaves. They sell as slaves to the to the uh, Western feudal countries. So this vision that that uh, Slavic nation be before feudalism it was socialism, it's not very good. That uh, maybe there are this is if they are socialist or 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 egalitarian, why they sell uh, slaves? So, uh, but uh, mm, it was. Uh, Ah, and second thing, which uh, it is not logic in the, it is not logic in the, from the Marxist perspective, the, the, the history which was written in Poland is not logic from the Marxist perspective, but it is logic for the Poles, Poles, that, uh, that Paul in, in Polish history, they celebrated uh, they were against the kings or at the, against the feudal feudal authorities, but with exception of these feudal kings, which made fight against Germany. So we have two um, two um, very famous uh, very famous uh, rulers of Poland. Firstly, first it is Bolesław Chrobry. He made uh, wars with Germany. He was a king of Poland. Uh, he was the first king of Poland. The first, the, the guy who Christianized Poland was, his name is Mieszko, but his son is Bolesław Chrobry and he was the first one he, who was coronated. And he made a be very very long war with Germany, and because of this, uh, he was presented presented in the socialist Poland like a hero. But he, he it is not logic because also Bolesław Chrobry he was responsible for the Christianization of Poland and the feudalization of Poland. But it was not a problem because he was anti-German. And the second guy is Bolesław Krzywousty, who also made uh, wars against against the Germans. So Germans. <laughs> so you know that this. Uh, this uh, the the learning of history in in socialist Poland was a little like this: that uh, peasants are good, uh, the nobles are bad. Uh, but if nobles make a war against Germans, they are also good. Uh, so. Uh, Mm, now, the, 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 these things that uh, was uh, we have three three steps of this alternative history of the Poland before Christianization. First, it is uh, Joachim Lelewel and the historians, we can say romantic historians from the 19th century. Second step, it is. It is um, it is the historian in the socialist Poland uh, uh, 
Uh, and now we have third uh, uh, way, wave of this movement. There are the historians in the YouTube or the older social media who present that before Christianization, Poland was a very big state, very powerful, but but unfortunately, bad Christians when they came here, they destroyed everything and. It is why we can't find the source, sources. So, it is a base of the history of socialism in Poland that uh, that there are the legends that Poles already lived in socialism. So, it is a little like a history of the um, which you can find in the. History, material, materialist, uh, historical materialism. Then, in historical materialism, there is this this uh, history that, firstly, it was the uh, primitive communism, after was the slavery, after feudalism, after capitalism, and after communism. Uh, so. Um, so uh, they tried to say in Poland that uh, before Christianization, before feudalism in Poland, we also already have a, a primitive communism. But I think that it is not the case that... Uh, mm, but uh, I will not answer this question. So, if you want to to know the history of uh, the, the, the history of the beginning of Polish nation, but also the history of the beginning of the uh, of the um, other Slavic nation like Russia. It is history where is a lot of mysteries. It is a lot of legends, a lot of mysteries. But of course, it is not something which is totally, totally, um, totally not true. Because the what was the source for this for this alternative history? The source was the uh, real things which happened in Poland in the um, after the um, it 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 was the um, after the second king of Poland. So the first first ruler of Poland was Mieszko II, Mieszko 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 Mieszko. His, his son was was uh, Bolesław Chrobry. He died in uh, uh, 1025. And after Bolesław Chrobry was uh, the ruler of Poland was new king. His name was Mieszko II, Mieszko II. And uh, in the time of this the second king of Poland, Mieszko II, we have a uh, uprising. The, the uprising which made that he, Mieszko II, he resigned. He, he go out from Poland. He, he flee. He flee to the Germany. So, it was two years, two years that there, the, the, the power of king, and the power of feudal, didn't exist in in Poland. The churches was were 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 destroyed. The the feudal, uh, the, it was the uprising of the peasants. But also, it was a uprising of uh, the people who didn't want it to be Christianized, and they didn't want it, this feudal society. So, uh, it is a base for this theory that that, that uh, there was a socialist society before Christianization. 
The problem with this uprising is that it's, it's, it's a legend that we know that it's true that this up, 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 uprising existed, but we don't know any, f there are not many information about this. It's very, very difficult to find. Maybe they, one day they will find the sources about this, but in the in beginning of the Mm, socialist Poland, they, they didn't have these sources. So they, they, they wrote a lot of things about this uprising and they made their own vis visions of this uprising. So we have uh, uh, peasants, anti-clerical peasants, which make a revolution uh, like uh, like uh, I don't know re French Revolution in 18th century, uh, and they struggle for socialism. Mm. What was the finish of this of this uprising? That we have uh, a new ruler. His name is Kazimierz, and Kazimierz Kazimierz Odnowiciel. Odnowiciel he he renew renew of the um, of the Polish kingdom and it is true that uh, the the real beginning of the Polish feudalism and real beginning of the Polish uh, Polish uh, Christianization is is a force and it is very important that the Polish society was Christianized by force that it is not something which is volunteer that uh, that uh, in because in the time of Mieszko we can when Mieszko decided to be to be christianized it was volunteer but it it didn't work it didn't work so we have second wave of christianization after this uprising this Kazimierz came to Poland with the German soldiers. It is very important that he came here with German soldiers and with this help of German soldiers, they, they renew the kingdom, feudal kingdom, they renew of the power of the Christian church. And they killed many, many of these peasants, pagan peasants. Uh, so, um, Mm, so it is very similar to the Christianization of the Latin America, w which was Christianization by force. There were uh, in Latin America it was Christianized by the by the mm, by the Crusaders, Crusaders, con Confessors, and um, and also mm, and also the the socialist leftist movement in 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 latin america also they they search they they present uh, they take part for example guy he supplied tupac amaru tupac amaru he was uh, also legend leader of the uprising against spanish uh, in peru i think in the 16th century, maybe, uh, but this Tupac Amaru, it is a legend. What is uh, and this this revolution, this uprising against feudalism in in uh, it is uh, I think uh, 1034 until 36 or 37. So, the, um, to, to finish this history, it's sure that uh, after the revolution, when we will take a power, we will we'll organize um, researches about this uprising, because it is a base of the Polish nation. Uh, but, uh, it's uh, I present you that uh, what was important for the learning history in the socialist Poland. Okay, mm. so now now uh, the the history all the history of the Poland Kingdom of Poland 
is is I think um, is eight centuries, eight centuries. Uh, so um, of course uh, the the historians in the socialist Poland didn't made a good job. We don't have the list, the all the all the uprising, peasant uprising, because it's sure that there were as peasant uprising in this time or class struggle. We have we knew a little of this uprising. So, so for the history of the class struggle in Poland, ah, now there is a one information very important for the history of Poland, socialists in Poland, that today Poland, one third of the Poland, it is a area which uh, before the Second World War it was it was the Germany. So. I said about, I am thinking about the Wrocław, city of Wrocław, Poznań and also the Eastern Prussia. Um, so uh, so in this history of the socialism in Poland, they are not interesting about the class struggle and the socialist movement in this vill in these cities. And it is important because uh, Germany was more advanced in the industrialization and building so capitalist society. So this class struggle was, I think, more important than in the Poland. We can find an example of the, of the Silesians, uh, Silesians, uh, mm, Peasants in, in Silesia, which um, were um, for the Karl Marx history of the Karl Marx, uh, how Karl Marx became a communist. He he find information from Silesia that there was uh, peasants in Silesia which are going to forest to take uh, wood, and they were killed by the by the. Prussian army for this. So, these Silesian uh, peasants, now it is Poland, but they were not Poles in this time, they were Germans. So, for the history of the socialist Poland, we will not speak about the workers' movement on Socialist Party in Wrocław or Szczecin before Second World War, because uh, and maybe it, it, there was something, but in the Polish textbooks, which existed in in in, in socialist Poland, they they were not interesting about this. Mm, so mm, we uh, things which is important for the for the understanding of the history of class struggle in Poland is that the Poland was a retarded country, country without urbanization, country without industrialization. That uh, in Poland mm, we there didn't exist uh, big cities. There is only one exception. It is, it is a city of Gdańsk. Gdańsk, uh, which uh, in the sometime was independent state. It was free state. It's not. Sometimes it was dependent from the Polish king, king kings. Sometimes Gdańsk started to be an independent city. But uh, in uh, all this, all this. Uh, territory of Polish kingdoms, the cities was very small. The, the Krakowy, which was um, capital of Poland and after Warsaw, which was 
other cap capital was very very small cities mm -hmm. if you compare this with the other cities from the from the western europe in this time you can find that this is provincial small cities and and, and the industrialization of Poland starting started uh, in 19th century. Before of this, the majority of the Polish economy was a exportation of the agriculture things and wood. So it is very primitive, primitive economy, but because of the uh, size of the country that in there was a time that Poland have a uh, 1 million square kilometers so Poland was um, two times bigger than France today because it was combined Poland with Ukraine with Belarus with the Lithuania with the Baltic states so it was huge country, but huge country which were uh, in the uh, economic level retarded, retarded. But of course, uh, because of exportation of these agricultural things, the Polish nobility was very, very strong, very rich, very powerful. Um, Okay, so we have history of the because we didn't have cities in, 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 in Poland, we have very small cities. So the to find history of the to the of the of the class struggles, we need to search a history of the peasants uprising. And we had a lot of peasant uprising in the um, Polish territories. Uh, the, we had also um, I recommended you to read a book uh, of Frederick Engels, Frederick Engels the uh, how to the war of the peasants in germany because uh, some of this uh, in the in this time in 16th century the this movement of the peasants was also in poland especially in this time the prussia was uh, dependent the kingdom of poland and also kingdom the king of Poland participated to killing the this this Polish this this, pe, pe, this peasants which are Germans Germans Poles this, they were mixed, but this movement uh, in the which was the which which is the continuation of the Reformation was in Germany but also in Poland. So it is uh, it is complicated things if you want to more want to more uh, know more about this read this book of angles but uh, mm, to understand this history mm, and other other mm, rebellion rebellion of, of Polish peasants you have to understand that uh, there are presented the Christian religion, like a religion of the egalitarian religion. So the leader of this movement in German peasants, his name Thomas Münzer. Thomas Münzer and Thomas Münzer is now is presented by Frederick Engels like a first German communist Thomas Minzer and Thomas Minzer he is a, he is a, he is a, how to say Christian fanatic 
uh, he, and he for him he he take a bible and said that uh, peasants listen to me the christian was a revolutionary socialist and everybody have to live in the egality and he present this uh, this uh, he, he used this Christian argumentation, Christian propaganda to, to organize a uh, uprising of the people which, which were exploited. And uh, in Poland we have uh, a, uh, we have a peasant uprising uh, very often in the, in the 17th, 17th centuries. Uh, 17th century uh, because of the uh, Poland was a big country and uh, Poland occupied in this time Ukraine we have all this movement of the peasants rebellion peasant uprising in the Ukraine the name of this rebellion is Cossack and now we have say something about Cossack. Who was Cossack? Cossack was, of course, it is very important for the, for the identity of the uh, contemporary nationalist movement in, in Ukraine, because uh, we can say that it's the beginning of the independent uh, uh, Ukrainian nation or or Ukraine or uh, Ukrainian state, these these Cossacks, but Cossacks was uh, was was more the community of people who who flee the feudal system. So it was the it was area where the peasants, bandits and other people flee uh, Poland and they, pro they were protect protected by these Cossacks. So we can find their Poles, Ukrainians. In this time the Ukrainian, the, the, this world, Ukraine is, there is no nation, of, there is no nations, there is no Polish nation, or, but it is not only reserved for for um, for Ukrainians and also the Bolesław Chmielnicki, who was one of the leader of this of this uprising. But he is not the first. This uprising started in the 16th century, and the uprising of Chmielnicki it is uh, uh, 1648. So before Chmielnicki. And there are there were other other rebellion of Cossacks, um, but Chmielnicki he speaks po uh, Polish language and other Cossack also they speak Polish language, so we can say that the the tradition of this of this Cossack uprising it is tradition of Polish socialist movement. It is now. It is the the question. Uh, that uh, to understand this uprising, we need to understand that the community of Cossacks existed all the time in 16th, 17th and 18th century. It was small community of the, of the fighters who lived together and fight together and sometimes they are mm, working for Polish kingdom, sometimes they are against Polish kingdom, they collaborated with, with, with Russia and they are very often used against against Turk or against uh, Tatars. So it was a small community of of fighters. 
but uh, when they started to make a war against the Polish king, this small community, not small, but they, this community starting to grow, grow because peasants they support support this this rebellion. So we have similar situation to the Spartacus uprising that we have a small allies, the gla gladiators of Spartacus, which in the time of the uprising are um, starting to grow because of the slaves and the peasants from the Italy who joined this this uprising army. So. Uh, when the peasants starting to join the army of Chmielnicki, it was very huge force and um, and it was force which uh, very often are um, succeed, succeeded uh, in the bat battle against Pol Poland army. So, so this this uh, history of of uprising Kazakh Kazakh uprising it is very very big history i will not present this history today but i want to say that in the same time when we have this uprising in in um, uh, uh, in, 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 in Ukraine, we have also similar uprising in Poland. So, in this time, uh, in this time, uh, in, in, in 1651, we have a guy which is named Alexander Kostkanapierski. He was a officer of Polish army who who was uh, uh, who protected one of the castle in the in the south south of Poland in the frontier with with this um, with the Habsburg uh, state and he uh, he make uh, maybe he he collaborated with with Chmielnicki, but it is not sure it's sure that he make his own uprising and the peasants from this this palace this region support him so in the socialist Poland, they, they, um, we have uh, many information about this this guy Alexander Kostkanapierski. He is a revolutionary from Poland, not uh, for, like Chmielnicki. And as you see, um, in this time, um, in the Poland, were very very brutal to the to the to the. Uh, peasant uprising it is very very brutal punishment for for them Poland was a state ruled by the nobles by the aristocracy and uh, they if pe peasants have uprising they killed them without mercy and also to show other that if you will um, re make a rebellion we will kill you like uh, like other peasants uh, okay so so um, I only present you this one this one uprising but there are other other uh, uh, peasant uprising in the history of Poland and um, and maybe in future we will have the presentation, the most important peasant uprising. So all these things which I said now, today it is 
a little like a legend that we have some movements but we don't have, no, no, have a sources about this and it is more than work of the historians from 20th century to try to find in information that this rebellion, this is class rebellion, that this is egalitarian, um, progressive rebellion and we need to support this. The I think that the one of the first uh, movement uh, which is which is, we have sources it's a movement which existed in Poland in the time of the French Revolution. The French Revolution um, uh, so um, especially in the time of the dictator dictator of Jacobins. So now I will see I will speak a little about this guy. Maybe you will know him, maybe not. But he is very very important person in Poland. And especially he is very he was very important in the socialist times. Who is this guy? His name is Tadeusz Kościuszko. Firstly, I would like to say that he is famous in United States because he participating participated in the um, war of independence and uh, in um, in United States he have a monument like an officer who helped the Americans fight against Brits. Uh, so this is a guy he which is famous in the world and uh, his his uh, history for the revolution in Poland is similar to the history of the French uh, French guy which name is Lafayette who also was the officer in the American Revolution and after he participated in French Revolution um, we can I can also say that Kościuszko was um, the, the the biggest the biggest mountain in Australia. It's named by him this mountain of Kościuszko. Kościuszko um, was a patron of the army which was created in Soviet Union in the Second World War. So we name it is. Pierwsza dywizja imienia Tadeusza Kościuszki, but uh, first division, um, um, uh, first tank division of Tadeusz Kościuszko, but uh, they name they are also Kościuszkowcy, who so the how to say that the the fighters of Kościuszko. What what guy I can say all that uh, that Kościuszko was uh, so he created a legion legion for the for the fighting for independent and after this uh, Poles who emigrated the many of these Poles uh, changed their name that they have two name. One was Kościuszko and second name is their, their name. And uh, one of the most uh, very famous politician in France, she name is Kościuszko Morizet. I think Natalia Kościuszko Morizet. So, so she is, uh, we can think that she is, uh, her ancestor was uh, uh, soldiers of Kościuszko. Okay. So, so Kościuszko, he was a uh, officer who fighted in United States, and in the um, in the um, we have a history of the 
insurrection which he made in 1794 and it is uh, the it is a history of Europe now that that French Revolution was a revolution against the feudal society in France but because of this French started to make a war with other other European countries and some of these countries uh, also attacked in the same time Poland so Poland became an ally of French maybe it was not formal alliance but uh, in Poland they started to uh, the, the revolution, French revolution and also the Jacobin way of thinking starting to be very popular so uh, we have a, um, a things which is named the Kościuszko uprising it is 1794 why mm, why it is uh, it is uh, important for us uh, so it is this guy which we name his name is Jakub Jasinski he is uh, he was a participant of this uh, uh, uprising of Kościuszko and also he was a leader of the Polish Jacobins so um, the the political the geopolitical situation was like this that that we have uh, Poland have a king Stanisław August Poniatowski who was a lover of the of the uh, Tsarica Katrin the second in Russia and he was a very bad king for Poland and also he w he agreed for the second partition in Poland which they are taking place before because in the 1791 was a poly, uh, Poland make a constitution after this constitution was war with Russia and after this war was uh, the was a second partition of Poland that that uh, mm, the mm, Russia and Autriche and I think that only two, two, these two countries because uh, uh, I need to verify this uh, uh, so we have the um, I will make you uh, I will make you a uh, very quick uh, presentation what is partition of Poland that you can understand about what I am talking about so the partition of Poland, the first partition was on 1772 and the next, uh, the, the last one it was 1795 and in this time Poland uh, uh, was destroyed so this is a, uh, this is a, this is a map of Poland and uh, and the it is mm, so the the biggest part of Poland was taken by the Russia uh, Russia uh, it is Autriche which not participated in the second partition and Pro Pro Prussia are participated in three partition also 
and it is Prussia which are take a Polish capital, Warsaw. Uh, so in seventeen um, in seventeen um, seventeen we have a constitution. Uh, and after there was a war with with Russia, the Poland uh, lose this war, and the consequence of this war was um, second partition. So after second partition, Poland is also only like this. So it's it's very small country. You know, it is, it is the, and uh, it is the time when the, when the enemy of the, this constitution, constitution which was not very g uh, good uh, for the, for the question of the class struggle for uh, things which interest us but of course it was po it is it is progressive if we compare constitution with with society which exists before constitution so the mm, the polish nobles they make a um, co coalition against this constitution its name is targovica targovica is small it is small village in the east of Poland and the, the Targowica it is synonym in Poland of the traitors so the Polish nobles make this make this this coalition against confeder confederation against this 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 constitution and they they invited the Tsarica Katarina to fight against Poland, to fight against revolution. They present this situation in Poland like a second revolution in Europe. That the, you need to fight with this because we will have also revolution and republic in, in Poland. So we need to fight against this. So they use this anti-revolutionary, uh, anti-revolutionary rhetoric, and the king, uh, he who was a, who wanted this constitution after he, um, who he 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 make a treason and he started to collaborate with this Targovica. So the, mm, the uprising, Kościuszka uprising was a uprising against uh, these nobles from this Targovica and also against Polish king. So we have two wings of this uprising. We have the people like Kościuszko, who only wanted to make fight for independent Polish state, uh, but with, without big reform. Of course, uh, Kościuszko said that we need change Polish society, we need to make a, a small, small reform for the peasants, but only for this peasant who will participate in the army of Kościuszko. Kościuszko don't want to be make a big revolution and finish with the feudal society. So it is the right wing of this insurrection. But in this time we have we have also uh, we have also this uh, left radical left uh, wing of the uprising, Kościuszko uprising. This is a people who have contact with the Jacobin, with the Robespierre, with the French Revolution. They, they watched what's happening in, in France, that the nobles, aristocrats, kings are 
uh, in the guillotine, and they kill them, they make a revolution, they change a society, and they wanted to make these things in, in these things in in Poland. So the first real real beginning of the class struggle in Poland where we have sources that it is it is a revolution social revolution that people want to make a change it is it is uh, these Polish Jacobins from the from the um, Kościuszko uprising and they have a little success for example they um, hanged and the traitors in Warsaw. In traitor, they make uh, nobles and the bishops in the Warsaw, and they hang them like a traitors. But uh, uh, the it, it was not popular in in uh, socialist Poland because. It is not like a French Revolution, because in this time when the when they speak, when they present, uh, wrote this, all this history of the socialism in Poland, they always try to find the revolutionary who who fight against the occupants so these peasants in 11th century is good because they are fighting with germans the revolutionary in 19th century was good because they are fighting against the tsarist russia this history of the kosciuszko uprising and also this radical wing of the kosciuszko uprising it is history not very known, also because uh, the complicated history of these people. Many of these people who, um, for example, Kościuszko, he betrayed this insurrection. Betrayed, it is big word, but he, he was arrested by the um, by the russians and after he was released because he promised that he will never make another uprising and he was released but many other uprising uh, uprising people was killed and also many people who participated in this uprising of kosciuszko after uh, it was the, the, the last month the last month of existing of Poland. So peep, it was that uh, we have this question the, the question of a social question existed in this in this uprising, but everything was very very fast and few weeks later the Russian army came to Warsaw and finished this uprising and finish also the existence of Poland. But uh, if we search information about the beginning of the communist movement, communist ideology, we, we analyze the Russian, uh, the French Revolution. And the, we have this guy with name is uh, Gracchus Babev. No, no. Wait, wait, Gracchus Babef and also uh, Philip Buonarroti. They participate and they have the um, society of the uh, free people. Um, so this. Uh, um, this. Uh, um, this uprising is also a symbolic question for the all 19th century for Poland because and it is something which I want to finish this this introduction that 
in the 19th century, before industrialization, we already have in Poland the people who are starting to collaborating with the socialists in Western countries. When, uh, when you, you see this uh, guy, Le Level, he lived in France and in France he had contact with, with Marx and other socialists. And we have a lot of, a lot of uh, Polish emigrants with, which have contact with the socialists uh, in Europe. But in this time, for Poland, the question of the workers' f f f fight, class struggle of Polish workers for socialism didn't exist because of one simple reason. The Polish working class didn't exist. So the question of the socialism in Poland, it was a question how to liberate peasant, peasant and how to... And so it was the and and, and also the, the the socialist theory in the Polish in the Poland was like in the other countries. It is not only Polish uh, Polish exception that uh, all these people Kościuszko, Lelewel, Mickiewicz, Jasiński, and many many others, they all came from the. Uh, upper class from the from the nobles from the aristocracy not from not from peasants the first one which we uh, can say that we have the workers uh, from the working class it is the 17 it is uh, it is the beginning of the socialist movement workers socialist movement which I will speak next time. So for today it will be finished. Um, if you can uh, wrote me in the commentary what do you think about this this idea to present the history of the socialism in Poland. Also if I am capable to make the speech like this or I have to wait and uh, practice practice my english and return uh, in uh, next month when my english will be better because uh, maybe if you say that maybe you wanted to say interesting things but uh, with your english it is impossible to listen to you also i want to know so thank you for all the guy who all the people who listen to the finish and it's all